a nerd or something? My name is Larry Smith and I am a graduate of West Point, class of 1962 as you can see from my name tag. I'm here to discuss the five U.S. service academies and I, the first thing I want to do is show you, Natasha, a video which lasts about 10-11 minutes which describes all five of them and gives a little bit of a discussion about it. Then I have a PowerPoint presentation slides and I would like to go through that because it talks about the admissions process and what you need to do, and then I will take questions. This is called the five-pointed star. The Air Force Academy at Colorado Springs. The U.S. Military Academy at West Point. The Naval Academy at Annapolis. The Coast Guard Academy at New London. And the Merchant Marine Academy at Kings Point. These are America's service academies, the five-pointed star. Each year, thousands of cadets and midshipmen enter our nation's service academies. They come from all walks of life and bring with them a variety of experiences. The common thread is to be challenged at the highest levels and serve our country in the most noble of professions. Cadets and midshipmen at America's service academies accept a lifestyle that is unique and demanding. Though they differ in terms of their history and missions, the military academies have more in common than most people think. The service academies all offer a rigorous four-year program. Their main focus is on developing leaders to serve our nation in peace and during conflict. Every cadet and midshipman receives a fully funded education, including tuition, room and board, and health care. And upon graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree, they are commissioned as officers in the uniformed services. Each academy is rated as a top undergraduate college. All offer majors in engineering, math, science, and the humanities. When cadets and midshipmen graduate, they take with them lasting friendships. They forge lifetime bonds under the intense pressure and the high moral and ethical standards demanded by our service academies. They are prepared to rely on each other to get the job done. Our academies are not only focused on providing a first-class education, but on training and leading. Cadets and midshipmen are a part of a very special team, America's team. These are the young men and women we turn to in order to maintain our national defense. It's a big job but these academy grads are very well prepared. We look for well-rounded candidates, individuals who demonstrate character, academic prowess, physical toughness, and the potential not only to excel at the academy, but also to excel as officers after graduation and likely make a career of the Air Force, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, or Merchant Marine. A healthy balance of these assets is considered by our admission boards. Cadets and midshipmen are taught by men and women who are top in their field. 
The ratio of students to teachers is among the lowest in the nation. The primary mission for instructors and professors is classroom teaching. Equipment is state of the art. The unique challenges are unmatched. No other school offers the range of opportunities available at a service academy. In keeping with a famous quote by General Douglas MacArthur, that on the fields of friendly strife are sown the seeds that on other fields, on other days, will bear the fruits of victory. All cadets and midshipmen are athletes, and every athlete is challenged. The academies share a belief that the competition and teamwork learned on the playing fields reinforce the team spirit needed to get the job done. At the service academies, there is both an officer and undergraduate chain of command. Cadets and midshipmen have a chance to develop and practice personal leadership skills. To be a leader, you must learn to follow. That's why upperclassmen have a great responsibility in training lowerclassmen. It's about becoming a leader who will inspire respect and obedience even under the most trying of circumstances. Our cadets and midshipmen are taught how to keep their heads when things get tough, to make the right decision the first time. They see what is required and make sure it is carried out, learning through their mistakes. The principal rule of conduct is based on honor. Cadets and midshipmen do not lie, cheat, or steal. Just as they learn to use the most advanced technology in the world, these young men and women also develop an inner confidence that keeps them pointed on the path of honor and integrity. In the process, cadets and midshipmen join a long and distinguished line of academy graduates. These graduates inspire on the strength of their vision and the courage of their team. Service Academy graduates excel in every sphere of influence, from general and admiral to government leaders and captains of industry. Some say that much of the history taught at the academies was made by graduates who went before. Our country expects a great deal from our cadets and midshipmen to make them the best in their chosen field. Academy graduates prove worthy of this assessment by the way they perform their postgraduate service opportunities. It all comes down to this. For those who want to reach their potential, they have the help they need to find it. America's Service Academies, the Five-Pointed Star. In 1954, just seven years after the founding of the Air Force, President Dwight D. Eisenhower directed the establishment of the United States Air Force Academy. Located near Colorado Springs, Colorado, the Academy nestles against the eastern slopes of the majestic Rocky Mountains with a campus covering 18,000 acres. Our proud heritage includes the accomplishments of military aviation pioneers like Billy Mitchell, Hap Arnold, and Benjamin O. Davis. Air Force Academy alumni include a Medal of Honor recipient, a Congresswoman, and several astronauts. The mission of the United States Air Force Academy is to educate, train, and inspire men and women to become officers of character, motivated to lead the United States Air Force in service to our nation. To that effort, we strive to attract highly qualified, diverse candidates from varying backgrounds who will strengthen and enrich the cadet learning environment and prepare our graduates to lead a global expeditionary air force. The academy is guided by the Air Force's core values of integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do, and based on the four pillars of military training, academics, athletics, and character development. Air Force Academy cadets hone their leadership skills through a variety of airmanship, immersion, exchange, and summer training programs. Whether it's participating in the world's premier aviation program with 90% of the soaring instructor pilots and free fall parachute instructors being cadets, traveling across the globe for one of our many immersion or exchange programs, or shadowing an active duty member at an operational Air Force base, Cadets take these experiences well into their Air Force careers. 
Each cadet may choose from over 30 academic majors and several minors with courses in engineering, basic sciences, social sciences, and humanities. No matter which path they decide, USAFA cadets are prepared for a future in the Air Force. Since every cadet is an athlete, all will participate in either intercollegiate, intramural, or club competition at the highest levels. Nearly 24% of our cadets compete at the Division I level. And we are rated number one nationally for athletic opportunities for women. As a future officer, character development is a key part of an Air Force Academy's cadet experience. When you exit that bus, you took the first step that every member of the Long Blue Line is taking. Do not disappoint those that came before you. Standards are set much higher for you now. You've chosen to sacrifice your personal pride for your brothers and sisters in arms. The Academy is proud of having more than 200 hours of character development training courses covering human relations and leadership along with many other emphasis areas. After four challenging yet rewarding years, Air Force Academy graduates earn a Bachelor of Science degree and a commission as second lieutenants. The education and training of America's future leaders is paramount. Let the United States Air Force Academy be the path to joining the world's premier air, space, and cyberspace force. United States Military Academy at West Point. The name evokes feelings of pride and achievement. Located on 16,000 acres of quiet hills, woods, and fields in the beautiful Hudson River Valley, West Point has been training the Army's future leaders for more than 200 years. Although located in the tranquility of the Hudson Valley, New York City, the home of Wall Street, Broadway, and Lady Liberty is less than an hour's drive from West Point. Since the Military Academy's founding in 1802, West Point has defined leadership in academics, in physical fitness, in military training, and in selfless service to the nation. Consistently ranked among our nation's top colleges and world-renowned for its leadership development, West Point combines cutting-edge technology and educational innovation in state-of-the-art facilities at this historic site. Both past and present, the long gray line is full of warrior scholars dedicated to our nation and inspired to serve a cause higher than themselves. The core curriculum at West Point stresses the fundamentals of engineering and military leadership. West Point was our nation's first engineering school and its engineering programs are still ranked among the best in the country. But cadets can choose from among more than 35 majors, including computer science, information technology, foreign languages, and economics. Opportunities are also available for research and study, both across the United States and around the world. In addition to semester abroad and military academy exchange programs, Cadets might spend time in the summer on advanced individual academic development projects such as researching renewable energy in Uganda, studying rotorcraft aeroelasticity in Hampton, Virginia, researching virtual reality cognitive performance in Marina del Rey, California, or participating in language and cultural immersion in countries like France, China, Tajikistan, or Brazil. Fitness is a key component for every Army officer. So naturally, the Military Academy places a high value on physical training. So whether it's competing in one of the 29 intercollegiate club sports, participating in intramurals, or representing the Army Black Knights on one of the Army's 25 NCAA teams, every cadet is an athlete. Even for those who come here prepared to face a challenge, the road to becoming an Army officer is a demanding one, and it should be. Because upon graduation, all cadets receive Bachelor of Science degrees and commissions as second lieutenants in the U.S. Army. To prepare cadets for the challenges they will face as Army officers, leaders in today's Army, and the world, 
the military academy hones cadets' abilities within a strong moral ethical framework. They are taught how to think, not what to think. And when they emerge as army officers, they will be soldier scholars, critical thinkers, and creative problem solvers. Prepared for the extraordinary responsibility faced by leaders of character in service to our nation. For more than two centuries, the United States Military Academy at West Point has developed leaders of character, inspired to serve, providing an education rich in military excellence, steeped in tradition, and strengthened by moral, ethical principles. This is not just the Army's Academy. It's America's Academy, a place that embodies the time-honored values of our nation. This is the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. On the banks of the Severn River and Chesapeake Bay, midshipmen earn a college degree and a commission as an ensign in the U.S. Navy or a second lieutenant in the U.S. Marine Corps. The Naval Academy emphasizes academics, physical training, leadership, and character to develop students from around the country to be leaders for our nation. Attending college in an environment of proud naval history and tradition, balanced with cutting-edge technology, makes the Naval Academy a truly unsurpassed experience. Our students choose from 24 majors in three concentrations, humanities and social sciences, math and sciences, and engineering and weapons. The Naval Academy is routinely ranked as one of the best engineering schools in the country, and all of our students earn a Bachelor of Science degree upon graduation. Outside the classroom, every midshipman is an athlete, competing in varsity, club, or intramural sports. The Naval Academy is the third largest NCAA athletic program in the country, with over 30 Division I sports available. More than 120 extracurricular activities are available to accommodate a variety of personal interests from musical ensembles and service organizations to academic and cultural clubs to adventure activities like skydiving, scuba diving, and mountain climbing. Midshipmen live in one of the largest single dormitories in the world, Bancroft Hall. Living and operating in units of about 150 students known as companies, midshipmen develop a tight bond with their fellow shipmates that lasts a lifetime. Midshipmen dine in King Hall, which feeds family-style meals to the entire student body of over 4,000 students in one single setting. Directly outside the main gate of the Naval Academy lies the city of Annapolis, the bustling state capital of Maryland. This exciting and energetic sailing city is full of unique restaurants, musical venues, and shops for students to enjoy. From this exceptional educational environment in Annapolis, graduates of the Naval Academy go on to serve as surface warfare officers, submariners, pilots, special warfare operators, and Marines in exciting locations such as San Diego, Seattle, the Atlantic coast of Virginia, North Carolina, and Florida as well as Hawaii, Japan, Italy, and numerous exciting locations around the globe. No matter where in the world they end up, officers from the Naval Academy apply the lessons learned in the past to shape the future of the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps. If you want an excellent education followed by an exciting and rewarding career leading sailors and Marines, consider the United States Naval Academy, where we produce leaders to serve the nation. The United States Coast Guard Academy is located approximately halfway between New York and Boston on a picturesque waterfront campus in New London, Connecticut. Its mission is to prepare leaders of character to serve as fleet-ready officers in the United States Coast Guard. This is accomplished through rigorous academics, athletic programs, and military training. As the smallest of the military academy, Cadets benefit from one-on-one -on -one personal interaction with our faculty as they prepare for one of 12 fields of study in engineering, marine and environmental sciences, applied mathematics, management, or government. The Coast Guard Academy's academic programs have been nationally recognized by the Princeton Review, 
U.S. News and World Report's best colleges, and Forbes.com. More than two-thirds of our cadets participate in one of 23 varsity athletic programs. Our Division III small school standing, club, and intercompany sports ensures that all cadets have the opportunity to enjoy and contribute to their sport of choice. The military preparation, which includes summer training in the operational Coast Guard, is intense as cadets prepare for one of the fastest tracks to command in the military. It's America's only military service where all duty assignments are open to women. The U.S. Coast Guard, America's shield of freedom, is tasked with protecting the safety and security of our nation, environment, and economy. The Coast Guard Academy, offering a tradition unique among America's military services and a degree of excellence surpassed by no other college or university. An elite education, a noble profession, an honored tradition. The United States Coast Guard Academy. The United States Merchant Marine Academy, the world leader in maritime education and training. Our mission is to educate and graduate licensed merchant mariners and leaders of exemplary character. Leaders who serve America's marine transportation and defense needs in both peace and war. The Merchant Marine Academy was the first service academy to matriculate women and continues to emphasize leadership, diversity, unity, and respect. Our values are simple and direct. Service, honor, and excellence tell our story. A story with over 70 years of history in producing the best merchant marine officers and maritime leaders for America. Merchant marine graduates abide by the motto, Octa non verba, deeds, not words, and are leaders who exemplify the concept of service above self. With 95% of the world's products delivered by sea, the health of maritime industry requires quick, safe, and efficient cargo transport around the world. Graduates of the Merchant Marine Academy can be found leading every level of this transportation network, supporting our country's economy and defense needs. The Merchant Marine Academy is the only service academy where three graduation credentials are earned, a Bachelor of Science degree, a United States Coast Guard license as a deck or engineering officer, and an officer's commission in any of the armed services or with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, also known as NOAA. Midshipmen spend 300 days training on board United States merchant ships traveling to seven different continents during their sea year and receive a salary during their at-sea training. All Merchant Marine Academy graduates have a service obligation. Graduates must serve for five years in the United States maritime industry as Merchant Marine officers on commercial vessels supporting the nation's commerce and defense interests, or five years of active duty in any of the nation's armed services. Those choosing to serve as Merchant Marine officers also have an eight-year service obligation to enlist in any reserve unit of the armed forces. We are the only service academy that offers this choice. With small student to faculty ratios, world-class simulators and classroom labs, and a fleet of over 100 training vessels, the Merchant Marine Academy is in step with emerging industry trends and technology. Programs of academic, professional, and regimental innovation help ensure 100% job placement at graduation. The Merchant Marine Academy offers a dynamic learning environment with a vibrant campus culture that includes broad-based athletic programs offering 22 varsity sports at the NCAA Division III level and six club teams. Located on 83 acres of waterfront property along Long Island's Gold Coast, the Merchant Marine Academy is just a short distance from New York City with its many cultural, social, and entertainment opportunities. The United States Merchant Marine Academy is a challenging and rewarding place to live, learn, and work. Join us and chart your own course. 
Cadets and midshipmen entering America's service academies represent the finest students our nation, our education system, our parents, families, and communities can produce. They stand out as leaders rather than followers. Cadets and midshipmen prove that they're worthy of our nation's investment in time, effort, and money by the way they perform their duties as commissioned officers. America's service academies are training our future leaders, the men and women who will take charge of America's treasure, our sons and daughters in the armed forces. Our nation thanks them for their dedication, self-sacrifice, and professional excellence while serving our country in times of peace and in times of conflict. If you elect to apply to an academy, we guarantee that we will challenge you we will assist you in stretching for excellence and will motivate you to raise the bar of personal performance. Our nation deserves nothing but the best in its officers. This is our challenge and our commitment to the people of this great country. We would be pleased for you to become a part of the cadets and midshipmen of the Five Pointed Star. All right, my name is Larry Smith. I'm a 1962 graduate of West Point. United States Military Academy. I know Natasha is interested in the Naval Academy. The people who uh, entered a little bit later, there's this young lady here. And do you have an interest in one of the service academies now? Excuse me? Coast Guard. OK. And back here, this young man? Just looking. OK. But let me just tell you about these five service academies. They are tuition free but they are not obligation free. It doesn't cost anything to go there. Uh, the US government pays for everything. Your underwear, your food, your bedding, your books, and your education. We send you all over the world in the summertime. I, I know uh, I was in a meeting just a couple of days ago with one of the West Point cadets that came out here and um, talked to him, and he said, well, this last summer, he was in Tajikistan learning to speak the language and spent a month there. We have semester abroad programs. All of these academies do. You go abroad, maybe you'll be in Chile, maybe you'll be in France, and maybe not in the military academy, but just in a normal university for a semester. All of this is paid for, and all you have to do is be qualified to do it. There is a five-year service commitment if, in fact, you do graduate from these schools. So that means that West Point, you will go into the Army as an officer in the Army. Air Force, Air Force officer. Navy, you'll become a Naval officer. Coast Guard, Coast Guard officer. Merchant Marine, you heard the person on the videotape. You go into any of the armed services you want, and you have a five-year obligation. Or you go into the Merchant Marine Force, which is a civilian force, and you have a five-year obligation, plus a reserve commitment obligation. What do you need to do to get into these places? Um, all of us, the three big ones, Army, Navy, and Air Force, West Point, Air Force Academy, and Navy, have an enrollment of 4,400 total by law. And we take about 1,250 per year. The two smaller academies are the Coast Guard Academy and the Merchant Marine Academy. Their total enrollment is around 1,000. And they take in their freshman year each of them somewhere between 250 people and 300 total for the nation. So we're very small schools. Well, what kind of schools are we? We are excellent schools. Uh, the ratings from US News and World Report came out just uh, last Tuesday, a week ago now, and ranked West Point, for example, as the number one public college in the entire United States of America. We rank number 12 overall behind Harvard, Princeton, Yale, and a few other schools, which is pretty doggone high. A few years ago, West Point was the number one school in the nation, beat even Stanford, Princeton, Yale, and Harvard. We all swap around. We're in that range. So is the Naval Academy, and so is the Air Force Academy. The smaller academies are a little bit further down the line because they teach fewer subjects now. West Point has 39 different majors, 
The Air Force Academy has over 30. These are all Bachelor of Science majors. The Naval Academy has 25 different majors. The smaller academies, the Merchant Marine Academy only has six, and they are all naval oriented or oceanic. And the Naval Academy, uh, excuse me, the Coast Guard Academy has about 10 or 11, and again, they're all oceanic. West Point is the most diverse. We have at West Point about 58% of our students take a humanities major. A math science engineering major is taken by 42% of the students. So when the ranking services look at us, they look at West Point and the Naval Academy and the Air Force Academy, because all of us are the same, and call us liberal arts schools. So where are we as liberal arts schools? This year, Forbes, I think it is. There's two big ranking services, Forbes and US News and World Report. U.S. News and World Report has, in the liberal arts college category, has Navy number one, Army number two, West Point, and Air Force number three in the nation as a liberal arts college. In the Forbes review, I think it's Army number one, <laughs> Navy number two, and Air Force number four or something like that. So we're all very good. The Coast Guard Academy and the uh, Merchant Marine Academy are smaller and don't do as much as we do the big three academies. So what's the stuff you need to do to get in? First of all, you have to determine whether you meet the basic requirements. Here are the basic requirements. You have to be at least 17 years of age by July the 1st of the year you would enter the academy. You can be no older than 22 by July the 1st of the year you enter. There's an age limitation. So if you're 23 before July the 1st, you're too old. If you're 23 July the 2nd, you're okay. Those are the age limitations. You have to be a U.S. citizen. You have to be not married. For the ladies, you cannot be pregnant. And you cannot have an obligation to support a child. If you have a child support obligation, you cannot enter the academy. So those are the basic legal requirements that we have to meet. After that, we have a ton of extra requirements that you have to achieve. We look at people and we try to figure out if they meet our mold, which is we need people who are qualified academically, physically, medically, they're different, and lead have leadership tendencies. So let's go through them. Academically, we ask that you have above average high school or college academic record. Some of our people come to us from a college. And we can give them credit if they pass our vi uh, validating exams. We don't automatically give them credit for their college courses or their high school AP courses unless they pass a qualifying validation exam written by the academies. So if you have an AP course and you uh, score an AP 5 score, which is the top, or 4, which is pretty good, that's good but we won't exempt you from some of our core curriculum general education classes unless you pass our validating exam. So we ask that you are medically qualified. You can't have a medical issue. If you have asthma, you're disqualified. If somebody's using an inhaler, that's a drug, a prescription drug, you're disqualified. You can't go in the military at all. If you have any type of a prescription drug that you have to take for a medical condition, you are physically disqualified. Can't go. If you have any other medical conditions, we will look at them and determine whether we can waive them or not. A couple of years ago, I had the number one student at Bella Vista High School in Sacramento in the San Juan District who applied to West Point, and we certainly wanted him. He was the number one student in his school. And he said, well, I have a little bit of a skin rash between these two fingers of my left hand. I have eczema, probably about the size of a dime. Comes out two or three times a year. We disqualified him medically, but he said, I can just buy an ointment at the drugstore, not a prescription drug, but just an ointment, rub it on and it goes away. We said, that's minor enough that we will exempt you and give you a medical waiver and we allowed him to enter West Point. He has since subsequently graduated. Yes, ma'am. About food allergies. What? Food allergies. Food allergies. Yeah, um, it depends on what it is. What type of food allergy? Peanuts. Yeah, that's a common one. Uh, 
we will look at it and see what the medical history is. We will ask the doctor, your doctor, to supply us with the medical history. Sometimes we will waive it and sometimes we will not. We don't know until we get to the medical exam. I'm not the doctor. I don't issue those this, um, uh, waivers, but our doctors do. So you're going to have to go through a waiver process if you have a food allergy. That's, that's a given. All right. Um, physical qualifications. You can read them. Above average strength, endurance, and agility. Um, good performance on the candidate fitness assessment. We issue and make you take a six-event physical fitness test called a candidate fitness assessment. Push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, a shuttle run, a one-mile run, and um, a basketball throw. So it's a total a discussion of who you are. And finally, we want to see whether or not you have had leadership tendencies in what you're doing. Whether you're in a club, a sport, or something, or you're in a student body uh, officer's position, we want to see if you're a vice president of a club, a uh, president of a club, somebody that's not just a member, but somebody that does something, shows a leadership. OK, what are we looking for in academic preparation? Four years of English in high school with composition. We want people that can spell and punctuate. You need to be clear when you're issuing an order in the military. And when you issue an order in the military, sometimes it's written and sometimes it's spoken. We need people that can communicate well. That means writing-wise and speaking-wise. Mathematics, four years of math in high school to include pre-calculus. If you haven't gotten that far, your math is deficient. Lab science, physical, uh, physics or chemistry, two years, one of each. Foreign language, two years. Pick a foreign language, whatever it is. United States history, one year. Computer technology, one year. All right, you got to start a file. This is when this shows spring of junior year. So if you're a senior now and you're just starting a file now, you're behind the curve. Because we're all looking at students right now who applied already in the spring of their junior year. Now, we don't make our decisions overall until uh, about March of next year. So if you are a senior right now and you haven't applied to the academies, you need to start right now and you need to start processing the stuff that we need. And we need to see, among other things, your SAT or ACT score. That's very important for all of these academies. If you have not taken either of those tests, you need to take it, and you need to take it now. SAT has two components, verbal and math. I'll tell you where we would like to see your scores. Math, 670. Verbal, 650 to 670. Do we get people who score 700? Yes. Do we get people who score 800? Yes. A couple of years ago, when the SAT test had three components, a total of 2,400, we entered at West Point a young lady from New Jersey who scored 800, 800, 800. And oh, by the way, she was the athlete of the year in her county in New Jersey. That's the type of student that we're looking for. We're in Congressional District 7 in California, where we're at right now. This is the district of Ami Berra. In Ami Berra's district, I'm the responsible guy for West Point. I'm also the person that deals with nominations for all of the academies. And I'm going to talk about them next, because we don't have much time. But first of all, let me just simply say, there are 55 high schools in this congressional district of Ami Berra, Congressional District 7. From the 55 high schools, for example, at West Point, we will select one or two people this year. That's it, from 55 high schools. The Air Force Academy is the same, and the Naval Academy is the same, and it's even less for the Coast Guard and the Merchant Marine Academy. OK, in addition to all of the other preparation you need to do, you need to get something called a nomination. Apply for a nomination. What's that? A nomination is a letter that is needed to get into four of these five schools. The one school that doesn't requirement, require it is the Coast Guard Academy. They're different. They're under the Department of, the, of Homeland Security. And so therefore, they have a di little bit different rule. A nomination is a letter from your congressman your senator, or the vice president of the United States that simply tells us that if we want to enroll you as a student, they will authorize it. 
meaning they who can spend money for the United States of America, a representative, two senators in each state, or the vice president of the United States, all of whom can appropriate money from the federal budget. And the letter that's a nomination letter simply says, if you want to offer admission to this person, the government will pay the tuition. What's the tuition? Well, it differs from school to school, but here's a number I use at West Point. Over a four-year period, we will spend approximately $408,000 educating you. So it's about $102,000 a year. Not all of that is tuition. Some of it is salary. You get paid as a cadet or a midshipman. You get paid about $1,100 a month because you're in the military. You sign into the military when you start. You, we pay for your food. We pay for your lodging. We pay for all sorts of trips. So it's not all tuition. So it's a big number. And we have to have it authorized by Congress. And that's what that nomination letter is. If we don't have a nomination letter, we can't offer anybody admission. You might have been pope last year, and it said that on your resume. But we will not be able to offer you admission unless you have a nomination letter from your congressman. Is that hard? No. Apply to the congressman. They've got a website. They will tell you, they have on their website, apply for a service academy nomination. You just click on that and follow their directions. And in December of this year, we will have a session on Saturday, December 2nd, where I am in charge. I'm the uh, Congressional Nominating Committee Chairman for Ami Berra. And we will interview about 35 candidates for the Air Force Academy, the Naval Academy, West Point, and the Merchant Marine Academy. And as I said, the Coast Guard Academy does not need a nomination, so they're totally different. They don't come to us. And we will then tell you whether or not you have a nomination. And if you do, then you're good to go in that particular regard. OK, once we start a file, we will ask you to fill out a lot of forms and give us the information. If we ask you for information, give it to us right now. There are lots of things that can hold up admission to one of these schools. The medical is one, and something that shows up on your records is another. We have to make sure that the people that we enroll have a clean police record. We do a police background check. We do an FBI background check, both. We know that you're medically qualified. I've talked about that. We know you're going to be physically qualified because you're going to go through a physical qualification test. But we want to look at all the other aspects of your life. We're looking for character, somebody who's got a clean record. Drugs are a big, big problem these days. We're not into drugs. It's that simple. We're a very small group of schools with very small enrollments paid for by the federal government. We are very demanding. We have a lot of criteria that we have to meet. And the competition is severe. For West Point, for Navy, and for Air Force, each of us gets approximately 16,000 applications per year, and each of us enrolls 1,250. So of the 16,000 applications we get, we throw away about 8,000 immediately because they're not academically qualified, they're not physically qualified, they have a police record, something shows up, and we just ditch them right now. And then we go to the other 8,000, and we work our way through and we get people who are fully qualified. We get down to about 3,000 to 3,500. And of those that are fully qualified, they have a nomination. We select 1,250. So those are the odds. Get a nomination. Complete the testing that we want you to do, the medical evaluation and the, the SAT, ACT. And a, by the way, ACT, if you take the ACT, the composite score of the five tests of the ACT should be 30 or higher. 35 is the max. We will take people whose SATs and ACTs are a little bit less than we have, that I have mentioned, but they've got to be compensating factors. They've got to be an athlete. They've got to be a leader. They've got to be something. So we're looking for students that are athletes, students that are scholars, and students that are leaders, all three in varying mixes. And those are the people that we enroll. Um, we will let you know by about March the 1st whether or not you are enrolled, and sometimes a little bit earlier than that. It's difficult to get in. It's, these are all, here's what I say. These are tough schools to get in, tough schools to stay in, but wow, what a school to have a diploma from.
All my life, I'm a West Point graduate, all my life, everywhere I've gone, when I walk into a room, people don't say to me, yay, or, or look across the room and say to their friends, they don't say, hey, you know that guy's an ex-army officer. No, they don't do that. Everybody points to me and says, hey, do you know that guy went to West Point? That's what it means. It's a very prestigious diploma. It ensures success. We're all self-motivated. We're self-starters. Cadets get about five and a half hours sleep per night because they're overloaded with academics like you wouldn't believe. If you go to Davis, you're on a quarterly basis. A quarterly basis student who's a full-time student at Davis has to take 12 semester credit units. If you don't know what that is, come talk to me when I'm over at my desk in the gymnasium. If you go to, and that's four quarters a year, 12 semester credit units per quarter. If you go to Berkeley, you're on a semester basis, 17 semester credit units, makes you a full-time student. If you go to West Point, you're going to do sports. Everybody participates in some sport. You're going to do military things. And oh, by the way, we're going to give you 20 and a half semester credit units your first semester, academically. So cadets don't sleep. They get five and a half hours sleep on average per night till the weekend comes and they can just crash. And all they do on the weekend is they sleep and they eat. That's it. And this goes on for four years. We have you. We're going to make you study. We put you in your room at night. We have evening study period from 7.30 in the evening till 11.30 at night. Most people stay up beyond that. Instead of going to bed, they can go to bed at 11.30 at night. But we enforce that. You don't have the option of just bugging out and going to the movies or hanging out with your friends in the park or whatever else you want to do. You're there and you're ours. And we want you to succeed and we will make you succeed. There are no easy courses at any of these schools we have everything that a school could offer. We have very robust extracurricular programs. My son went to West Point, graduated in 2003, one of my two sons. My other son didn't want to do it, went to Davis, graduated microbiology degree, and today he's a lobbyist. My other kid is still in the Army. He went out and threw hand grenades and shot at people in Iraq in 2005 and 2006. Came back from Iraq and said, I'd rather fix them instead of shoot them. I want to be an Army doctor. The Army made him a doctor. Today he's an ER doctor in the Army still. He's over in Europe right now. He's coming home in 10 days. He's been over there deployed for about a year. So there are lots of opportunities, and it's all paid for. But you have to be a high-performing individual to be able to get into these places in the first place. Thank you very much.